Okay, today I'm going to give you the uh, quick tour of this apartment I'm working on. I'm uh, putting the air conditioner in and cleaning up some stuff. First, there's a closet here for your shoes and jackets and stuff. And up there is the uh, main service. You can see it's only a 30 amp service. And there's only, there's only uh, six breakers. There's actually only five in use. There's one breaker that's not in use. So that's the closet. And over here, there's another closet. Not so bad, I guess. You know, it's a very small apartment. So here, there's a door separates. This is the entrance area from where you come in the front door. And there's another door here. This is a very common thing in Japan. It separates the entrance. So you come in here, and that's the room. That's it. Close that door over there. Get my tools and stuff set up here to put the aircon in. But underneath there, there's a very basic uh, two burner gas cook stove. There's a fan up there. There's a sink there. Hot water is provided by a unit outside. That's it. That's your whole room. So, and you got a little tiny veranda out there. The air conditioner will go over there. That's the gas water heater. That's an emergency hatch to get off the building. If there was ever a fire, that pops open. There's a ladder that goes down to the next floor. And there's one on all the other floors, you can see. One above over there. 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 This is a barrier between the two apartments, but you can easily kick it through. So you can go from apartment to apartment to use the emergency to escape. That thing out there is you put a, a pole on there and you can hang your washing on there. Uh, fridge goes there. Well, there's an electrical socket up there, and that's a vent to allow air in. You see a very basic kitchen setup. There's a decent number of shelves and drawers and stuff. And it's not bad. This is the thing that controls the hot water. You turn that on and you have hot water. And this is the thing you control the temperature of the hot water. And you can hit this button to automatically fill the bathtub. This is the bath or the toilet room. The washing machine goes there. That's the faucet that I had to replace the packing, uh, the gaskets and stuff on. Also, I put this thing on here. This is where the washing machine clicks on, but this is a new style one where it's got a... See if there's any pressure there still. Is there? Yeah, oh, there's still pressure there. If the, somebody left the taps on and the hose came off or broke, this, is, this would stop the water from running out. That's a new thing. Very basic vanity. Got lights on it. Toilet, and then here again is the, like I said, why they put the plug there when they could have very easily just put it back there. Okay, I'm not going to go on about that. And then in here is the ofuro, the toilet, or the, sorry, the shower or bathroom. It's got a decent sized bathtub for a small little apartment. And there's even a window in this one, which is kind of rare actually. And that's a mirror there. I polished that all up. It's all nice and shiny now. Oh, that's it. A little bit more storage up here. Oh, and the fan up in there. I put a new fan up in there. And this fan actually, it uh, vents here, but it's got another hose that goes over and actually vents in here as well. So one fan does both rooms. Probably more information than you'd ever need to know about a small Japanese studio apartment. This place rents for around... I think it's 85 or 90,000 yen, so that's what? I don't know, $800 a month, something like that. Oh, there's also this thing here. This is a Japanese thing. This on here has a little kind of recessed area here. You can hook stuff on there. So you, they hang stuff on here. You can hang all, it's kind of like a French cleat, but not. But looking back towards the Genkan again. And there's the air conditioner I gotta put in today. So let's get onto that. So I've already got my backer board up. And uh, there's the electrical, and uh, that's the drain, and that's the two refrigerant hoses. So now I'm just going to mount that sucker up and do all the connections and pump the lines down and get it done. So I'll take you along for that. Okay, that's the basic connection. I got my refrigerant line in, my refrigerant line return, got my water drain, and I got my electrical there. 
Over here on the aircon, I've got the refrigerant line return, refrigerant line in. This is the uh, drain and the electrical. It plugs, this unit here plugs into the power on the wall, and the other electrical goes to the uh, the compressor outside. I've got the vacuum plate off here. Um, this unit has the typical thing where there's a drain plug in this side here. You can see that, or the drain is already connected here. So you could actually switch either side. Also, these things have a cutout here. There's a cutout there, and there's a cutout here, so that if you had to, you could run the refrigerant line outside of the unit. The way that we're going to mount it is all going to be hidden. Um, one of the good bad things about this setup here, this is always done originally, I guess, when the building was built, is there's no hole that goes directly outside. This actually goes down inside the wall and comes out down on the bottom part of the wall, which is great, but at some point in time, if you have to replace the refrigerant lines, you can't, because they're basically in situ. So you have to then drill a hole all the way through the concrete wall, which is, of course, going to be expensive, but that's the way they do it. Or I guess we could probably go through this wall, which is much thinner than that wall. That's a, a supporting I guess that's a beam, huh? Okay, I'm gonna flare the smaller of these two things on here. A couple of important things that you always gotta do with this is number one, make sure that you put the uh, thing on ahead of time. And, uh, cause uh, otherwise you'd just be redoing your flare. Don't ask me how I know that. And the other thing is I put this stuff, it's called flare guard. And uh, basically you just spray it on the, it's kind of a oily, greasy stuff that lets you, uh, I guess it makes the flaring smoother. Let's put it that way. Okay, there it is. Tighten that up. And then this thing. Of course I, uh, what do you call it? beveled or shaped or flare, flare uh, rounded off the inside of that tube so it doesn't have a sharp edge. Okay, see so that thing when it gets to max, it automatically cuts out. You can't over flare with this tool. They make these in electric now, it's all cordless. And I kind of laughed at that and thought that was ridiculous. But after doing these all day long, you do three or four or five in a row, I can understand how a guy's doing an apartment complex would want to have an automatic one. I get it. Okay. So my test for these is I want the, I don't know if you can see in there, but I want the flare, number one, to be smooth and have no cracks. Number two, I want it to fit just inside the, this uh, nut, the flare nut. I don't want it to be too big or too small. Okay, so that one's good to go. So now I'm gonna do this one. Okay, ah, a nice fit, just the right size. Okay, so that's those two done. So here we are outside. Before I move the uh, unit over here, I'm going to do these things. The drain comes out, I don't know if you can see that in the picture, the drain comes out here, there, <coughs> your refrigerant lines and the electrical. So let's get this tape off of here. When I remove the old air conditioner, I always tape up the ends of the lines because you don't want you know keep as much air out of there as possible and water and moisture and other crap so this was cut with a pipe cutter thing and it leaves an edge in there so you want to remove that you always want to point the pipe down so the shavings don't get trapped in the pipe nice Do the same on the I guess you could say this is the liquid line because it's small because it gas has been recompressed into a liquid and this is the gas line because it's big because the gas is now big yeah that looks good okay remember to put this on yay not a dummy today Oops. give myself Ok, 
Okay. Again, my nut on. Give myself that eighth of an inch or so. Squeeze. Move this over to the line. Good and tight. Fits good. Okay. The next thing is to bring the other unit in here. It's gonna be hard to film because this is a really tight spot. So you're gonna have to forgive me if I don't film that. Okay, here's my setup for pumping this thing down. I got my vacuum pump here, and then this is hooked up into this adapter, which is straight through. There's no Schrader valve in there. This is a service port. This is the gas line, the refrigerant line. And then this hooked up to this adapter here, which is hooked up to this gauge. Now, the reason we have the gauge here is I can close this off eventually, and then when I turn the refrigerant on, I don't have to worry about the refrigerant contaminating my gauge. Okay, and then this also has a switch down here so I can close this and put the um, Schrader valve back into the service port. So right now I'm going to open both of these, turn on the pump, and when I get this down below 500 is the plan. It's in micro whatever it's called. Microns or something, I can't remember. Once I get down below a thousand, I'll start rotating with ball valves because there's always a little bit of air that ends up stuck on the ball valves. that. See how it jumped up again. And I'll move the other one too. Okay so now I'm gonna go away and let, I'm gonna let this run for at least 10 minutes. It's already down below 500 or close to it. valves one more time just to make sure there's nothing left on them. There we go. Already below 500. Both valves are open. And I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and it's down to 140. That's pretty nice. I'm going to just flip those valves again just to see if I can get it to move at all. Let's see there, a little bit of air left on that valve. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this valve that isolates the pump. Leave that valve open to there. And then I'm going to wait another 5 or 10 minutes to see if that number goes up. It will go up slightly because what has to happen is the, the tube and the inside unit will balance. So that will probably go up, but as long as it stays below 500, I'm golden. So I'll be back in another 5 or 10 minutes. Okay, it's been uh, another 10 or 15 minutes and that basically hasn't moved and it went up a tiny little bit, but it's all good to go. So now I'm gonna just uh, disconnect all this crap and uh, let the refrigerant in and get this job done. Units running, blowing air, all buttoned up over here. Nice as I can do it tight spot. And in here, hey, it's blowing cold air. I'm going to call that one a win. Okay, that wraps up the little air conditioning install and the minor renovation here in this very small apartment. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing that. It's just a different aspect of what I do around here. I also clean air conditioners and I'll even move one. I don't really like working with used equipment, but you know, it, it can be done. If you have an air conditioner that's not really old in your place and you want to move it, uh, we can do that. There's always the possibility sometimes when you move an old piece of equipment, it breaks. 
but uh, generally the air cons can be relocated. There's a procedure to pump them down and then move them and then you have to evacuate the lines and all the rest of that kind of stuff again. Anyways, this air conditioner sounds like it's working. It was blowing cold air there for a minute, but I think it just stopped because it's really not very warm today. It's, I think, 18 or 19 degrees outside and nothing only goes down to 18. I guess I'll turn on the heat pump and see if I can crank up the heat for a minute. But uh, yeah, nice little unit, easy to install. Uh, you know, relatively, didn't really have any problems. It all went together fairly nicely. Got one little thing I gotta clean up there. I wanna stick one of those sticky things on the on the wall there to uh, put a zip tie on so I can control that wire a little better because it's just kind of hanging loose there. It's a little disco, as my Indian friends would say. Anyways, that's it. Just wanted to bring you along. I hope everybody has a great day. I hope you're out there doing something, getting off the sofa, fixing something, making something, building something, staying safe, washing your hands, wearing your mask, and all the rest of that good stuff. Anyways, signing off. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.